This is Weather Center Live. We are in the lab live. Good day to you. I'm meteorologist Chris Warren. And I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno. On this Friday, August 14th, we are here to get you ready for the week and also to just show you some cool stuff here coming Got up. Some cool stuff. weather stuff to show you. And with us as always, meteorologist Jessica Arnoldy. Chris, did you know there's only three weekends left in the meteorological summer? Which means August is almost over. All right, so glad to have you here on this Friday, and we've got a lot of summer-like weather to talk about as we get through the end of summer, as Jess pointed out so uh, nicely here. We are wrapping up here uh, the record-keeping portion of our summer you with know, there, some summer-like storms. Yeah, there's a, a lot of signs of fall. Football starting to, yes, to get going yes. right now. Back to school shopping. Some students already back in this class. This is crazy. A little mini wave, doesn't it? That's more? all he yeah. needs anyway. Right. <laughs> a little mini surfboard, a mini wave. All right, let's um, let's look at the weather for you. Melbourne Space Coast looks good right now. Satellite Beach, no weather worries. We do have a couple of spots, again, with some thunderstorms out here. So take a look. Right now off the coast, on the west coast side, Tampa, you're fine at the moment. Uh, the cruise Just port, that fine. Come back but the rest of the we've got to look at some, uh, some shower activity offshore so we'll watch for some of that to move on a different sign though too is now in south florida we've got a lot more rain than uh than chris saw when he was there the past couple of days so we'll see some of that moving in as well we are going to watch this dip in the jet stream be a factor in thunderstorms actually that form we have this old front but with that dip in the jet stream it's going to punch in a little mid-level energy so maybe we could get some storms with some small hail or some gustier winds that's not out of the question but also we'll just get this front to be the focus for showers and storms which is why you have a better chance of seeing more rounds of wet weather across the northern and central part of the state. But still we've got a chance in the southern part of Florida and this is the area that we know we need the rain. We keep talking about that drought here. It is a concern. We'll see that right through the weekend here. This is our classic summertime pattern where we'll get showers and storms popping through the afternoon every single day and it could add up to an inch or two locally heavier amounts of rain uh, of course when you get these big downpours. All right Chris, let's talk we're very hazy in Houston today. Both spots are going to be pretty hot. Who will be hotter? Let's take a look. Um, normally, you talk about the Southwest versus uh, the Gulf states, and you think it's a dry heat versus a moist heat. Um, maybe not so. Look at Phoenix, our dew point creeping up. 58 degrees. So uh, temperature in Phoenix will be 95. The feels like is going to be 95, but our dew point is even higher in Houston. So our feels like actually pretty close to Phoenix. This these are very comparable cities and very comparable weather climates out there for you today. So take a look at some of the heat we're dealing with. Phoenix, we're going up to 114 and that is going to be a record high if we get there. Breaking records in Tucson, Roswell, Albuquerque. It is warm all throughout the southwest and you know, Chris, even LA is going to be pretty warm as well. Yeah, and much of the, the west coast ha have some red on the map because of the fire danger that yes. we're looking at. We had some nasty storms. <laughs> in, uh, Probably uh, in, not uh, likely. No, you got our, our expert over here. <laughs> no, not butter, Shut I'm sure butter I can tell you cuts. that. All right, let's talk storms today. I've got a couple of spots to watch for you, like Chicago and Detroit and Green Bay. And we're going to keep a close watch on Whistling Straits, which is where the PGA uh, Open is. So we're going to be watching for the risk of storms up here. Disturbances rolling down what's going to set these off. And we do have a couple of showers right now around the Chicago area. The, the big event is actually back across the northern Rockies. So um, that's coming over the weekend. But there still could be some storms today that possibly turn strong or severe. So take a look at how one of our models times things out. We look at Green Bay and we look at Milwaukee and later this afternoon, early evening, see storms. Chicago, right before the dinner hour, you've got your afternoon patio plans. There could be storms. So you might want to think twice about that for today or at least have some options. And again, Sheboygan, we've got the chance for some storms as well. And then here comes the big front. Today it's going to be moving through parts of Idaho, Montana. A lot of the energy up in Canada, but uh, the front itself is going to move through the Dakotas, back Back down again through Nebraska and the cornfields. We're going to be watching for that risk of storms. Fargo in, in uh, North Dakota, you are in it as well. And then it sinks a little farther south on Sunday and east. So Minneapolis, another chance of storms for you coming our way on Sunday. A lot of heat and humidity building though before these storms get here. So we'll be watching that as well. All right, Chris, let's uh, let's chat about something in the news. And that would be El Nino. And likely something that you're going to hear yeah. about for a long time. And Dr. Greg Postel is here to break it down because you look a lot. You're an excellent, probably the best in the building, at looking at medium range forecasting. You. And you have to look at things like El Nino and other what you call signals when forecasting long term. Yeah. Well, day time. And we talk with a threat in the Western Pacific, which comes just a week after, you remember, Typhoon Sudalor 
uh, raked right through Saipan. And, you know, they still have a lot of cleanup to do across this area. And so concerns now that we've got Tropical Depression 16W right behind it now, already seeing some of the outer rain bands affecting Saipan and Guam. Guam under a tropical storm watch, uh, Saipan under a typhoon watch, which is equivalent to our hurricane watch. So there could be winds in excess of 74 miles per hour affecting folks in Saipan, which many still do not have power or water or uh, dealing with the, the effects from last week's typhoon. So this is the track expected of 16W. It is expected to increase in strength, uh, getting beyond typhoon strength uh, up here to maybe 140 miles per hour. So it could be get coming close to that super typhoon status yet again. Another one here in the Western Pacific and again increasing in strength and continuing to track in this direction heading over in the direction of Saipan impacting us here. Now calling them uh, twin threats because there's another one behind it. They are going to track differently according to the models. It looks like this one behind it is going to take more of a northerly track um, but still could have some impacts by the time it gets up towards Japan. That will be one to watch as well. Now taking a closer view from this side of the world and we spin it around and show you what's happening on the Atlantic side of things. What a difference, right? What a difference. We don't even have many small flooded storms, let alone a big cluster of storms. So again, things are very quiet in the Atlantic um, and we're not expecting any development there. When we go over to the Eastern Pacific, we have two things to watch. Invest 94E, which does have a pretty good chance of developing within the next five days. It is a 90% chance of developing here and the models do keep it offshore. But then we also have Hilda, now post-tropical cyclone Hilda. Um, final advisory written as expected. The winds have decreased tremendously to 30 miles per hour. All of those strong upper level winds, that wind shear continued to work away at that circulation. However, some of the moisture from Hilda is still out there in the environment, Chris, and still going to impact the Big Island's weather. Yeah, and coming up a little bit later, we're going to talk